What's up guys, it's Airstuff FPV here in which I'm comparing and giving more detail about two of my successful homemade FPV platforms. These are 1.6 meter in-wing span V-tail pusher designs that fly beyond 10 kilometers out and back with the first design being the Peace Hawk and my most recent, the Silver Eagle. They are quite similar in electronics, dimensions and appearance, but the performance gap is bigger than I expected it to be. So let's begin with the Peace Hawk design. So where does the name come from? It was actually derived by the famous Ansley Peace Drone designed by Ed of the Experimental Airlines YouTube channel. And fun fact, the Peace Drone was to be designed as a V-tail pusher, but the designer went for the canard configuration instead with its long range variants. So after its predecessors, which flew medium range FPV, came the long range version, which is my first design to cruise at 10 kilometers out and back. I was truly satisfied with the results and some would say to call it at that and move to a different design, but I wasn't done. Unlike it being so successful, I saw much room for improvement of the VTL pusher platform, hence my development of its successor, the Silver Eagle. And this particular variant holds my current record of 12.02 km out and back and flies over one hour with a 4S 5000 mAh LiPo battery. The biggest difference between the two are the main wings. The Peace Hawk has a foam board made wing that weighs 370 grams and has a total wing area of 2540 squared centimeters, including the ailerons. And its slick airfoil created by these strips you see here allow it to fly quite fast under power and glide. It also creates less drag than the double stacked version which is the Armand wing and it makes an aerodynamic noise which can be quite audible which is cool. But the wings of the Silver Eagle are made out of XPS foam board or call it Depron. It is more brittle, but much lighter than foam board. The wingspan is the same at 1.6 meters, but it has double stacked ribs, which increase its camera line and its cord is lengthened by one inch. And once assembled, the wings weighed in at 333 grams and its surface area, including ailerons, are 3,099 squared centimeters. Comparing this wing to the other states an 11.1% weight reduction and 22% increase in wing surface area. And this improvement alone made the most difference in flying performance, which is that the Peace Hawk's efficiency is between 132 to 138 million parts per kilometer, which is compared to 110 and 120 million parts per kilometer efficiency of the Silver Eagle. And the fuselages are both identical in dimensions and are made from foam board like the stabilizers, which are 30 centimeters on both platforms. But the stabilizers cord on the Silver Eagle design was increased at the root and tip by half an inch to match a certain design ratio that goes with its main wing. And the other improvement on the Silver Eagle was the distance between the prop blade and the trailing edge of the stabilizers. Simply because the closer they are, the noisier the prop gets in combination with reduced prop efficiency. So the prop clearance measured from the trailing edge to the prop tip is 2.25 inches on the Peace Hawk but is redesigned to a 3 inch clearance on the Silver Eagle. Not a huge difference in size but the noise reduction is definitely noticeable. So talking about the electronics on the UAVs is that they are pretty much identical except for the motors. Uh, there is a 35, 36, 950 kV on the Peace Hawk and a 4108. 600 kV on the Silver Eagle, both spinning 12 by 6 props. And the placement of all the electronic gears also very much identical with the FPV gear at the nose and the flight controller at the wing joining spars and the receiver and GPS units behind it. And this is of course not ideal for the electronics because you want to keep every transmitting device away from a receiving unit as far away as possible. By example, mounting something in the wings or way back at the tail. But to keep the wings clean and to keep the build as simple as possible, I installed everything along the fuselage and it worked out great. But to get an increase in video quality, I thought about extending the video antenna upwards from the airframe. And this really made a difference after applying the extensions for the first time on the Peace Hawk design with the top of the antenna being 18 centimeters from the fuselage and 43.95 centimeters from the receiver. And this modification was applied to the Silver Eagle as well and has the top of the antenna 32.25 centimeters from the fuselage and exactly 50 centimeters from the receiver. And the thing is with these little adjustments on long range FPV gear like extensions is that they allow you to squeeze out additional kilometers before you fly to the limit of your gear. So these modifications definitely improve flying experience as in better range and video quality. 
So the empty weight of both fuselages differ only with 3 grams, but the olive weight of the Silver Eagle is lighter compared to the Peace Hawk by its lighter wing width, more surface area, and its improved airfoil. And in combination with a better video antenna location, meaning the antenna, makes it a truly improved successor. And this is because it currently covers between 28 and 30 kilometers per battery cycle, which is a couple kilometers more than the Peace Hawk. But this is all gonna change because I've ordered loads of Samsung 21700 size lithium ion cells with 4800 milliamp hours of capacity to be configured into 4 S2P packs. This would mean that I can at least consume 8000 milliamp hours before considering to get down. And assuming that the Silver Eagle does 125 milliamp hours per kilometer would mean that its trip distance would go beyond 70 kilometers and its flight time to an approximate 1 hour and 30 minutes. But that will be covered in another video. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys gain some insight on how I design and modify my FPV builds for increased performance. Please leave a like to support the channel and click on the suggested videos to see how I've built them by scratch using Experimental Airlines techniques. So thank you guys so much for watching again and I'll see you guys in the next video.